How is it going, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Early Bets on the Seed Scout Media Network. Early Bets is a podcast where we interview people on the move. These are not people that have necessarily found their thing yet. They're not founders of billion dollar companies. They're not investors on the Midas list. These are just people that have demonstrated really high aptitude that I wanted to get to know and I wanted you to know about as well. So with that said, let's get into today's episode. All right. How's it going, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Forward Thinking Founders, where we talk to founders about their companies, their visions for the future, and how the two collide. Except for today. Today, we are doing a different kind of episode where we're learning about a market that everyone seems to care about, which is crypto, which is blockchain, which is which is this whole Web3 world. And, and in today's episode, we have brought on Diana Chen, who is the podcast host at the Unstoppable Podcast, and she also runs content at Unstoppable Domains. Welcome to the show. How's it going? Hey, Matt. Thanks so much for having me. It's going great this Monday morning. Awesome to hear. It is, um, it is going great. Like, I feel like it's, it's, um, it's an interesting time just to be in tech, to be on the internet. And, uh, um, and we're going to kind of dive into some of that, but I'm glad that your morning has gone well. So let's kind of start with um, high level. Um, what is the Unstoppable Podcast? What is Unstoppable Domains? Just a high, high level kind of, what are you working on right now? Yeah, sure. So Unstoppable Domains, I'll start there. Um, we're a company that we're, we're basically creating the bridge between Web 2 and Web 3 through blockchain domains, which are these human readable names that you can use to send and receive crypto, build decentralized websites, and uh, a whole, whole host of other things. Um, and so this is really cool because, you know, right now, if any of you listening have tried to send crypto to somebody, you have to, you know, if I want, if I want to send you crypto, Matt, I have to message you and say, Hey, Matt, what's your public address? And you have to send me your public address, which is this long string of like 40 to 64 alphanumeric letters and numbers. And then, you know, you're copy and pasting it over and then I'm copy and pasting it. And I'm like, sweating because I'm like, shoot, did I miss a letter? If I miss it, then like everything, all this money I'm trying to send you or NFTs or whatever I'm trying to send you is just going to disappear. So it's, it's very nerve wracking. Um, and so what we do is instead of, you know, sending it to your public address, we could just send it to mattsherman.crypto or whatever your blockchain domain is. And that is so much easier to remember and to verify and um, make sure that you're sending it to the right person. So that's, that's, uh, that's you know, sort of the idea behind these human readable names and the impact that they have for people who are in crypto. And then the Unstoppable podcast is a podcast that's all about uh, all different areas of crypto, specifically focused on Web3. So we talk, I would say we talk less about, you know, trading Bitcoin and ETH and all of that stuff, the finance side of things, and more about like NFTs, DAOs, um, Web3 in general, identity, uh, things like that. So it's a pretty broad podcast, but um, it's it, it, we try to cover all our bases because I think it is really important to have, you know, sort of this well-rounded education around crypto since there's so much involved and we're talking about, you know, building the future of the web essentially. And so it's important to understand like all these different aspects of it. So let's, let's go through a little bit of like a user experience of, of this, um, of, of a domain of unstoppable domains. So let's say I have mattsherman.crypto and I'm going to get that right after this, uh, right after this, the show, um, so is that kind of a, a uh, for lack of a better word, equal or like a synonym to what my actual, what my actual um, kind of, kind of uh, like code is? And instead of someone needing to remember the code, they send it to that and then it kind of is the same. And then my secondary question would be, what can you send to a, to a domain? If I had Matt Sherman crypto, can you s- literally send anything? Is it just Bitcoin? Is it just ETH? Like h- how, to, how should I think about that? Yeah, great question. So to your, your first question, yes, your blockchain domain name is a complete replacement of whatever your public address is. And so instead of like 0x54f2, whatever, you know, on and on for 40 to 60 characters, it'll just be mattsherman.crypto. I can go in my Coinbase wallet. I can type in, you know, send, you know, ETH or Bitcoin or whatever. Um, and yeah, to answer your second question, it, you can send anything. You can send Bitcoin, you can send, send Ethereum, you can send Dogecoin, you can send Litecoin, 
Um, whatever you want to send, you can, you can send through any wallet that we have integrated with our blockchain domains, which, uh, is like most of the major ones out there, Coinbase, rainbow wallet, some of the ones you might've heard of, all of those are integrated. And so if you go into your app, uh, you can just type in, you know, mattsherman.crypto and send crypto that way. You should definitely snag that after now that I've said mattsherman.crypto like 50 times. Uh, hopefully somebody will pick up and be like, Hey, maybe I'll just send Matt some Bitcoin. <laughs> I definitely, I definitely will. And it is one of these things where I feel like it's kind of in some ways, digital real estate, just like, just like a traditional domain is. Cause I tried to get, I was looking at when doing research for this, I was looking at just different domains. And so it actually got my company name dot crypto or dot ETH. I'm just like, why? Like someone is trolling me right now, but it's okay. It's, this it's just like, it's just like kind of how it is. Even, even with, with GoDaddy, like you get, you got one, those are almost like in some ways I would see like original NFTs, et cetera. Um, I'm curious though, NFTs, and DAOs and chains and all these things. Like, how do you, I guess, two questions. One, how do you know what to focus on for the podcast? Like, yes, it's very broad, but like, even with this broad focus, there's so much going on. There's so many blockchains, there's so many technologies, so many projects. How do you decide what to focus on and what to ignore and what to pay attention to? Yeah, great question. There is so much happening in the space, so it is not an easy task at all. I would say that part of what I focus on in the podcast is what I'm personally interested in since I'm the host, so I kind of get to pick and choose. Uh, so it does happen to be a lot of NFTs, DAOs, Web3 things. And then how do I narrow it down from there? Well, uh, honestly, crypto Twitter is the source of a lot of my information and maybe not information, but at least the source of like what's hot out there and like what people are talking about, what's trending. And so if I see a new NFT project or a new DAO that is just like making headlines, uh, I'll try to reach out and bring the founder on and talk about that. Um, whatever people are commenting about, you know, like I try to take note about the episodes that people are messaging me about, like, Hey, I really love this episode. Take note, you know, like, what was this on? Why do they like it? Um, so a lot of it is user or listener feedback as well. And I try to, you know, put out content that people want to hear. So it's a combination of a lot of those factors, but, um, really just like staying on top of crypto Twitter and staying on top of what people are talking about, what's trending is like a, a big part of it. And some more questions kind of going back to the, the actual domains. Um, so is what is a way to think about the domains in relation to like Web2? What I mean by that is, you know, I know there's there's, there's multiple um, like this dot crypto, there's like dot ETH, there's like, I think there's a lot of these. Um, is it like almost like how should someone think about like, oh, should I get a dot crypto? Should I get a dot blockchain dot blank dot this? Is it and does it matter um, in regards to like what you can send and what you can't? Or is it all just kind of real estate and you kind of pick pick your tribe in some way? Yeah, great question. Um, so dot ETH is through a different company. It's through ENS. And the biggest difference between ENS and Unstoppable, I would say, is that with Unstoppable Domains, you buy it once and you own it for life. You don't have to worry about renewal fees, you know, like you do with traditional domain names. You got to do the annual renewal or else somebody else can snag it up. Um, with ENS, they do do it the traditional way where you have to renew it every year or you have to, you know, buy it for like three years at a time, five years at a time. Uh, so that I would say that's the main difference. And then within Unstoppable, domains, we have right now 10 different top level domains. So dot crypto is uh, the main one. It was our, our second one actually, but is the main one that people use. That one is integrated with everything that we're integrated with right now. Our, um, we launched eight new top level domains in the last couple of months. And those are not quite integrated with everything. We're waiting for a layer two solution to come out to integrate everything just so then it'll be a lot cheaper for people to actually use them to transact and do cool things with them. Um, the way that you can sort of, you know, think about each of these, um, there's actually, we, ha we actually have a really good video with Andrew Rosner, who is like one of the biggest people in the traditional domain space, analyzing each of our new top level domains like dot blockchain, dot coin, dot NFT. So with certain ones like dot NFT, you know, those are perfect for artists or collectors or anybody who's into NFT. Like for instance, I have my Twitter username DDW Chen dot NFT because I'm obsessed with NFTs. And so it's sort of like a way to, you know, right now just to signal to people that like, hey, I'm really into NFTs. 
Uh, we also have dot DAO, which, you know, that's pretty self-explanatory as well. Like if you're a DAO, if you're a member of a DAO, if you're really interested in DAOs, like that's a great one for you as well. We have dot X, which is like one that a lot of people are most excited about just because it's so short and it's so like statement piece, you know, like Diana dot X, like that just sounds like super badass. And so that's one that people are really, really into. Um, we have dot 888, which is great for the Asian community. Um, 888 is like a, a symbol of, you know, just like wealth and prosperity in um, in Chinese, I, I think, and maybe in other Asian countries as well. Um, and so that one is a big one as well. So it really just depends on like what your personal interests are. Uh, and as of right now, you know, we're sort of still just trying to like strategically release the best top level domains that we can think of and then letting the market decide what's going to be the most compelling if there is one, you know, like maybe there won't be a dot com equivalent of Web3 because everything is just more decentralized and we'll see, you know, like five to 10 front runners like we don't know yet. We're still in, you know, super early days of that. But um, but uh, yeah, definitely like go check it out and like just see which one is most compelling to you and like which one speaks to you the most and, you know, that you identify with the most. And in there, uh, you mentioned that you're really into NFTs. Um, what, what What is an NFT for people that are just dabbling and they, they haven't gone down the rabbit hole? And uh, um, let's, let's start there. What's an NFT? <laughs> yeah, so NFT stands for non-fungible, uh, non- Sorry. Non-fungible token? Yeah, non-fungible non token. Um, I hate starting with that because people are like, fungible? Like, what does that even mean? Um, and so non-fungible, it just means unique. So like when you think of fungible tokens, you can think of fiat, you can think of um, just like money that is, if I give you a quarter and uh, you give me a quarter back, it, it doesn't matter what quarter you give me, you know, you just any one, I don't need that exact same quarter I gave you. If I give you 10 bucks and you want to pay me back with two fives, that's totally fine. I don't need that exact $10 bill I gave you because it it is all worth the same thing. And there's nothing inherently valuable about the specific $10 bill that I gave you. With NFTs, non-fungible tokens, they are unique. And so um, the biggest use case we've seen so far is these NFT art pieces. Uh, but there really are so many more use cases for NFTs beyond just art. I think we'll see, you know, coming up soon, like, the NFT space within blockchain gaming and online gaming really explode with like in-game assets that you can buy, um, you know, whether to just like show off your style, like digital fashion or to level up in a game um, or to do whatever. I think we'll really see that explode. I like to think about, you know, like a more practical aspect of NFTs where you can NFT any unique asset that you hold. And this could be your driver's license, your passport, your home deed, your insurance papers, your health records, anything that is unique to you can be NFT'd and, you know, stored on the blockchain so that uh, you never lose it and you have everything in one place um, and you can carry it wherever you go. So um, that, yeah, I guess that's like an intro into NFTs. And I guess like why I'm super interested in it even from the art perspective, like I have never been a collector of any sort. Uh, like I think I I had some Pokemon cards when I was a kid, but like that is probably the extent, but like very casual like Pokemon card holder um, and never really been into art either. And so, you know, like why am I like super into NFT art now? I think for me, it's really the community behind all of this. So, uh, you know, like if you go on Twitter, you see all these people with like penguins as their profile pic or cats or punks or apes or whatever. And you're like, this is so silly. Like people are paying millions of dollars for, you know, a, a picture of an ape. Like what? And it's all be from my perspective, it's like all because of the community behind it and what that signifies to people. So it's like if you hold a board ape or if you hold a cool cat, you have access into this gated community of people who, you know, have maybe similar interests from you, maybe different, but at least like one, one thing you have in common is that you're both really into this project. And when I look at these projects, you know, there's so many of them now, I always will go into the discord, go on their Twitter, see how active and engaged the founders are with the community and see how active and engaged the community members are as well. And so with, with like some uh, communities like Cool Cats, I know they hold 
calls, you know, not just weekly calls, I think like multiple times a week, they've got these community calls where you can go and learn about the project, or you can just go and hang out with people. Um, some of them I've seen do like games like trivia night, you know, like online trivia night with their community members. So there's all of these different, um, things that you can do to feel more engaged in a community. And I think that's really like the value that we've seen uh, behind these NFTs. Yeah, one thing I really like about um, the NFTs, and you're alluding to this, is it you know it is very silly on on the on the front, and you just see Twitter, and literally everyone is like a zombie ape, all these different things. Um, but it's like what all these all these people kind of believe the same thing, um, and the under the underlying reason why this is blowing up, I think, ties everyone together, which makes me very excited um because i think that needs to happen i think change needs to happen and everyone kind of i feel like involved in the in the in the crypto space whether a little or a lot kind of wants change in how on how finance flows um and how capital flows and i think it's um interesting that uh zombie apes are, are the things to catalyze to catalyze the change if someone wanted to break into um break into this world or not even break in because i don't think there's anything to break into it's wide open you got twitter you got this you got that but if someone wanted to just learn and take the first, they take the second step because they just listened to this podcast. What could they do? How can someone learn more? And how can someone get an unstoppable domain? Like, how easy is it? You know, how, how can kind of like someone like kind of uh, get in that way too? Yeah, for sure. So I would say the first thing to do is to get a wallet. So if you don't yet have a crypto wallet, um, go get one. I would recommend, you know, the easiest ones, MetaMask. Uh, or Coinbase or Rainbow Wallet, those would probably be my top three picks. Go and get a wallet, uh, get some ETH or Bitcoin, you know, just a little bit. Like, I'm, you don't have to be rich to get into this by any means. Like, you can go and buy $5 worth of it and then go and like play around with different apps. So whatever projects you hear about on this podcast or on other podcasts, or you're seeing people talk about on Twitter, just go and check it out. Connect your wallet, see what it's all about. Um, a wallet is not just for, you know, holding uh, value, like holding monetary value. It's all also used for logging in to decentralized applications. And so um, definitely get a wallet, buy some Ether Bitcoin or whatever you want, um, and then go and check out some things. I think the best way to learn is by doing. And so go and like actually whatever, you know, projects or apps you hear about in these podcasts, you read about in blogs, go and like check them out. Don't just read about them. Don't just listen to it. Uh, go and actually check it out, play around with it. And then if you want to get a blockchain domain from Unstoppable, just go to unstoppabledomains.com and you can write on that top search bar, search for whatever domain you want, whether it's like your first and last name or, you know, your Twitter handle uh, or whatever you want, go ahead and search for it and then um, pick the domain ending that you want. So like .crypto or dot coin or dot nft or whatever it is you want and we have domains starting from twenty dollars you just buy them once and you have them for life um and so you don't have to worry about like forgetting to renew them next year or whatever um yeah it, it's super simple and then uh, uh, for my last question if someone wanted to find you on the internet learn more about you or your podcast how can they find you are you on twitter tiktok do your podcast how do they find that yeah, sure. Um, Twitter is the best way to find me. So I'm on Twitter at DDW Chen. And then you can also check out my podcast. It's on Apple, Spotify, anywhere that you would get your podcast. It's just called The Unstoppable Podcast. You can search for it there. If you're more of a video person, we also post all of our podcast video format on our YouTube channel. So just search for The Unstoppable Domains YouTube channel and you can find all of our podcasts there if you prefer to watch. Cool. Thanks for coming on to the podcast. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me, Matt.